Seminatrix Apprentice started with a lecture. Remember, we're an intimate, personal, hands-on, friendly dungeon, said Mommy, my boss. Mommy was 60, owned the dungeon for maybe 30 years, and always smoked a pipe. She was holding on to the back of the chair. Her bowed legs and felt boots planted into the carpet. And through the gray smoke, I could see her face well. Aztec, grown skin, edged with creases and wrinkles, and the no-nonsense look of an old pirate. Say, take a big dungeon, fantasy makers, for example. Those bastards had 29 girls last time I checked, and they're open 24-7. The girls have to take a whole training course. First, they are submitted for one year, and then they must attend bondage at go go every Wednesday. Only then they can work as dominatrices. What is it? A fancy production dominatrix factory and mad school for dogs? I am telling you, it's like we are your sweetheart's local bakery, and they are Starbucks. We are definitely better. Come down to the dungeon after about 15 minutes to train with me. Put on the red vinyl and platforms. The customer arrived wearing the uniform, a goatee, glasses, and a suit. So far, all our customers look like employees of the same corporate structure. Conservative, middle-aged, reserved, and dignified, every one of them struck me as a quintessential American character. That is, until they remove their clothes. Of course, in my suburban reality, quintessential American characters never removed their clothes. The fear of running into my husband's boss or our next door neighbor got stronger with the embrace of each client. He's a partner in a law firm, whispered mommy. A good guy. Her crooked body was transformed. Clad in black, a miniskirt, all leather spikes, a mesh top, and nylon stockings. She looked like a German sausage served at a Halloween party. In 15 minutes, I walked through the boudoir, smiled at my new co-worker, Mr. Zoe, who was spanking somebody's crony butt with a fly swatter, and stumbled down the steep stairs into the dungeon, afraid of breaking my neck. The customer looked different. He was spread eagled on the OBGYN table, modeling a playful, flowery dress and pink old lady panties. Like a shaman in slow, sticky motions, Bonnie tied him up. She put on handcuffs, ropes, and straps. She made them and made knots, moving with a hypnotic quality. As I took small steps around the OBGYN table, watching the scene reflected in the mirror, I realized that bondage required a dexterous ability that I lacked. I looked at the mirror, a hunchbacked witch pins in her mouth, creepy skin of her cleavage spilling out of her mesh top, and a tall red vinyl Amazon with features frozen. Was it me? Unsure of my role, I touched the various parts of my body in a provocative manner. I did and undid my shoe straps. I licked my venom red lips. I sighed. I didn't feel real. You are a naughty, naughty girl, said mommy to the customer. Naughty, I repeated in a guttural voice. We are going to punish you. Punish you. You are going to be in so much pain. Pain. Mommy then attached a close pin to his left nipple. I attached another close pin to the right one. It was really hard to find his nipples. She then twisted close pin a bit. I did the same. It had to hurt. I expected to see some reaction from the customer, wincing, grimacing, some sign of life of a human in pain. The customer was just lying there like a lump. He looked dead. 
Mommy blindfolded him, and in an instant her soul mare was gone. She went at me, a playful pirate, tossing chains, grunting and clicking her heels. She was goofing around, giggling and pointing at the clock. Then there was a knock at the window. I froze. I imagined cops with guns, arrests, my semi-nude pictures in the San Francisco Chronicle with a caption, 38-year-old model 3 caught torturing the CEO of Midwest Bank. My knees gave in. Mommy just grinned, raised her naughty index finger and led me to the window. She lifted the black leather curtain, grinned wider and pointed at a bluebird sitting at the windowsill, backing on the shutter. Mommy beamed like a child, wiggled her ugly finger at the bird and returned to the torture table. My knees were shaking so bad I almost fell off my platform. Mommy readjusted the clothespin on the man's nipple, scratched her head and dismissed me with a royal gesture. After the session, Mommy changed back into her gray rags and felt boots and announced, The new girl is a natural tease. She is just like me. Mistress Zoya threw herself into the tattered armchair next to me and sized me up with the fortnight man of an ex-marine. Mistress Zoya was a gladiator of a woman, a half-eaten pink glazed donut always in her hand. Her baby doll face, framed by a black bob, mismatched her heavy body, which seemed more fit for an American football team than for a sex work establishment. You should have seen her, said Mommy, prancing around the way she touches herself. You slut. Thanks, I said, trying to avoid Zoe's step. You go, girl. You can get really good. Just figure out the psychological part. After all, remember, they're here for the psychological in the first place, or else they would go to escorts. They need the suspense, helplessness, mystique. You know who was the best dome ever? Mistress Zena. That bitch she was good. Asian. Asians have such a good work ethic. Plus she was an eye candy. A lifestyle dominatrix. I almost died when she quit. When did she quit? I asked. Moved to Hollywood, she said. Married one of the producers of The Matrix. Or something. A sicker in need of a 24-7 living dome. You know what she did for fun? Carved hearts on her slaves with her Swiss army knife. Then pinned the hearts with safety pins. Where? I asked. Anywhere. Mainly to their own bodies. You guys are mellow. You could never replace that bloodthirsty gold digger. But you'll be all right if you remember the main thing. Perverts want to feel special. You tell each one of them that he was your best customer ever and that you had tons of fun. But at the end of the day, the whole hour is all about girls. It's all about her caterpillar eyebrows curled up and she squinted at us like a school teacher. As if saying, all together now children. It's about the clients I asked. They did, said Mr. Zoya. Ma ha, said mommy. And aren't those bloopers just adorable? She then looked at her appointment book. Zoya, you have a new customer. Carl, the shit eater. <laughs>